The other day I did a piece about um, Catherine Burbal Singh. And Burbal Singh, all of this is about a crisis in the Michaela Community School that boasts astonishingly good results in Wembley. It's a converted office block. I, 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 I thought it was interesting to do a little bit of research, so I did. And um, Burbal Singh herself is a head teacher with backbone, of course, who says that she's Britain's strictest head. I think, frankly, she's got a limited experience of history, but she may be right that today, in these sort of post-beating days, she is seen as unusual. Many heads are simply, uh, they're, they're either, in my experience, decorative, pushovers, um, administrators, or simply appointed as knowing winkers who will provide a gentle push when Ofsted visit. And Catherine Burbal Singh is, uh, at the moment, waiting a judgment, uh, a legal judgment, about her school's ban on prayer rituals, and this needs to be seen in context. Um, when pork was avoided by Muslims and beef was avoided by Hindu children, she felt that the dining room was becoming divisive, a sort of a war game environment, and her solution was to ban meat entirely. I think she hadn't thought of the Orthodox Jewish position. It all sounds very egalitarian until the halakhic duty to eat meat is recognised, although that would be kosher meat. And when a girl spread her jacket on the ground of the play area and began to recite Islamic prayers, and then she was joined by 30 other pupils, the governors voted and banned all forms of prayer rituals. I'm, I'm not sure whether it's all form of prayer or all form of prayer rituals. Th th this is really the problem because it, be it becomes a little bit vague. One pupil, however protested, and I'm, I'm not sure whether that was the girl who started praying in the first place. Anyway, Catherine Burble Singh says, and I'm going to quote, when you have a multicultural community, you need to actively encourage the children to cross those racial and religious divides. I do not want to divide children according to race and religion. And because of our building, because of our ethos, I would necessarily have to divide them. I would have to send all the Muslim kids upstairs and all the non-Muslim kids downstairs. I don't want that. Uh, now, of course, if prayer is banned in a school, then it is not a multicultural school. Um, and it certainly is not a, not a multi-faith school. It's a strictly secular school. There's nothing wrong with that, of course, but not quite what she's promoting. And I'm wondering whether it actually falls within the law, where the law says you have to have a form of prayer ritual, I think, at least once a week in a school. As for prayer, it forms the bedrock in the language of our society. Um, it, it forms the bedrock of the greetings in, us, in, in, in our language. Good morning is a contraction of God a morning. Goodbye, God be with you, and so on. Uh, I, I think the influence of prayer in language is extensive and it goes beyond British culture. Um, in American courts, um, in God we trust, in God we trust. Um, well, maybe um, uh, th this might alarm Catherine Burble Singh. Once she gets rid of that, everything will go back to normal, will it? The details around the coins, if you, if you pick up a coin... And, uh, and and look at it, FD, Fides Defensor, Defender of the Faith. Um, th that was such an issue in the coronation. Defender of faith, defender of the faith, defender of the Anglican faith. Uh, but, but it was actually given by a pope to Henry VIII for writing, or rather he didn't write, Thomas More wrote, a, a pamphlet against Martin Luther. It's a religious inscription on the coins that we might use to pay for Miss Burble Singh's secular lunch times. It all becomes slightly circular and slightly absurd. And the argument would go that in Britain, religion has been privatised and therefore no longer has its impact. It, it has limited cultural and social impact. I, I don't think that's quite the case. Uh, from the innocuous and slightly archaic, go blimey, uh, to speak of the devil, nice to see you. Th th those, are, those, are, those are expressions which are clearly rooted in religion. 
but good day, good morning. Um, this is God give you a good day, God give you a good morning, and so on. And the national anthem is insanely religious. God save our gracious king. Is that to be banned from uh, Burble Singh's secular school? I, I, I still know of people who say, God bless you, or bless you, not, not only to acknowledge a sneeze, but I'm, I'm, I'm sure they would do that as well. But, you know, just, just generally, oh, bless you. Bless, they say. I, I mean, it sounds slightly slightly vapid and, um, and, and, and twee, but they, they say it. And, and you can find, um, you find bless, bless is also in Shakespeare. It's, it's a greeting. It's one, of our, it's one of our common greetings. You find it in the Merry Wives of Windsor. Um, bless the bully doctor, which gets the response, save you, master doctor. Um, master, of course, in in time becomes Mister, and in that instance, in Merry Wives of Windsor, the term bully, bless the bully doctor, had its original meaning of a warm greeting, and probably referred to a person who uh, was wealthy enough to eat boiled meat. And at the end of the Napoleonic Wars, the bully boys uh, who 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 were who were no longer wanted on the boats were. Um, shipped off and, um, and and dropped off in the south coast and people were warned to lock their doors against the bullies who were on, on rampage, these sailors offloaded from the war who had nothing better to do than get drunk, carouse and cause trouble. Um, there's an argument, of course, that um, the children and the pupils in Miss Burble's Sing school are embracing some form of religiosity, finding religion simply to cause a problem in the school system. And why not? I mean, it's always been, religion has always been a cause, a, a problem causer. Why not here? But I think there's also, I, I, I think b before you dismiss religion and leap on the verbal sing bandwagon, you've got to recognize that religion forms a central part of our society and a central part of our language. And to deny that is to, de is to deny reality and history, and we shouldn't be doing that in a school.